I'm very thankful for the prayer that was publicly offered on our behalf and certainly the part one part of that prayer that stuck in my mind is that would God clear our, our minds and our consciences and our hearts of the things and the thoughts of the world for just a little while. You know, one day we won't have to think about the world. We won't have to be bothered by whatever's going on out there and whatever's going on in our minds. Very thankful for that, and I would ask for a continuation of your prayers that the Lord might bless the reading of his words. I certainly need your prayers this morning. Very thankful to be here. Very thankful that we are still a free country and we still have liberty to come and go into the house of the Lord. And it is my prayer that God will be merciful and that we will continue. You know, I can't imagine uh, not being able to, but there has been times and seasons throughout history when it was very difficult to gather and to worship. Uh, I've not lived in those and I'm very thankful for that, but you know what? come in the past usually comes around again unless the Lord doesn't, doesn't come back. As I stated this morning, uh, I want to talk about love this morning and, and the power of God's love and how it should affect our lives and what we do and what we don't do. Speaking of prayer a while ago, I want to read a few verses. I've got many and hope I'm not too scattered. And <clears throat> the Apostle Paul says a prayer in Ephesians chapter 3 beginning in verse 14 that I want to read and then and try to move on. It says, uh, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory <clears throat> to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man. That should be our prayer every day, that we'd be strengthened in our inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Love is a word that is widely used, spoken of very often by people in the world, uh, families, husbands, wives, brothers and sisters. Love is, is used very randomly in word, but is it just talk or, or, or is it just walk? You know, I know that Sister Shelley Johnson was done the things that Brother Rex said she done, but I know far more that Brother George did. And not only for me, there's some in this church, I'll tell you, he went out of his way for. He loved people, maybe a lot of you. Everybody's got their own case, but there's cases that I know of that he went above and beyond what he had to do because he loved the Lord Jesus Christ. He loved the Lord. When he first began to pastor a church and several churches, uh, I'll never forget the story he told me. And Sister Jamie's not here, but she knows this story is the truth. She come up to him one day and says, you love the church more than you love me. And he said, I do. And, you know, that's a, that's a, that was an honest truth from Brother George. The Lord came first with George Johnson. Then came his wife, her family. He, said, he, he was last. Went to Brother Mark Burris' funeral many years ago down at Stephenville, I believe it was, or somewhere along there, Lido. We got home uh, around 11 o'clock that night from the funeral, and Brother George loaded up and went to the hospital. He was tired. He was weary. He had a, a saying that Sister Shelley, I think, took to hand. Not, it's better to, to rust out or to wear out than to rust out. He was always going about. He loved people, and if he could help them, you can't believe the number of folks that I've been told of that were not in the church here at Lubbock or any other Trinity Baptist church that he went to see after them and to help them if they were in the hospital. Brother Dale Turner was telling me a story of, of some of his wife's folks being there, and they wasn't Trinity Baptist, I believe it was, but when he found out they were in the hospital, he went to see them. Now, I understand the last two years we've had this COVID deal going on, and I think it's gotten out of hand, but a lot of things you can't do as you once did. But I probably wasn't doing those things when COVID wasn't around. I, that's the question that we have. Are we manifesting the love that God has given to us? Is it rooted and grounded in us? We'll talk about God's love toward us in a minute. It says that <clears throat> being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend, to attain, or grab hold of, 
with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye may be filled with all the fullness of God. You know, when we understand how much God loves us, it ought to make a difference in how we act and react, act and react to what God would have us to do and what other folks would have us to do. In John, the Gospel of John, chapter 13, Jesus makes a statement to his disciples. You know, I, I know that when we honored our father and our mother and we done what they was told, the Lord was well pleased, well pleased. When we do what God would have us to do, God is well pleased. It's a manifestation of your love to God because of the God love that God had for you. When we don't do those things, more times than not, and we'll talk about that a little bit, it's evident that we love ourselves more than we love God. That's just the way it is. Jesus said in the 13th chapter of the book of John, 34th verse, he says, a new commandment. You know, we think a lot of times about the Ten Commandments. People write them, hang them on their walls or everywhere, and they're real and they're purposeful, but there's a lot of other commandments that were given. Do, do these commandments matter? We were commanded to come together as God's people and, and, and draw fellowship from one another and to help one another because there's a strength in that you can't find out in the world and you never will find it. And it doesn't matter whether even we're all of the same. I don't believe it matters if we're all of the same denomination. I, I believe the Lord's people need to be together because those who are not the Lord's people are our enemy. I hate to say that. We don't treat them as enemies, but they're, they're against us. They're against Christians and Christianity. He says a new commandment I give unto you. He's speaking to the disciples, but he's speaking to us also. He says, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Jesus says we need to love each other the way he loved us. That's a pretty tall order, isn't it? It's a pretty tall order. We're to love each other as Christ loved us. Furthermore, when Jesus said he loved us, he didn't just say it in word. He done something to show us, did he not? He came and paid the debt and the penalty that you and I could have never paid. Had it not been for his sacrifice, sacrificial love, you and I would yet be in our sins. This worship service would be in vain. My preaching would be in vain. Everybody's would be in vain. But Jesus loved us uh, beyond anything that we could possibly think of or measure. But it's far easier to love some folks than it is others, isn't it? Some folks don't make it easy to be loved. You know, I said something about Brother George, and I believe that. I believe that was a man who loved the Lord's people, and he loved the Lord first. There was another man. His name was Willie Jean Green. I had Brother Willie. I tell you, he, he was just like Brother George in many ways. He loved the Lord's people whether they went to the Methodist church in Olton or they went to the Church of Christ or any church. It didn't matter. That man was there to help in time of need regardless who it was. He had the love of God in him and the love of God poured out of him. You know, I've known some folks like that in my life. There, there's more than that, I know. But uh, that's how we're supposed to manifest the love of God as we go on our journey here in this world. He goes on and he says, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye love, have love one to another. In Matthew chapter 5, a lot of times this is how I believe uh, we take life when it comes to love. It's how we view love and it's how we view or act out in the world. In Matthew chapter 5 and Verse uh, 43, it says, You have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. You know, who is your neighbor? The Bible tells us it's all of God's children. Some you know, some you don't. The enemy that's under consideration here is not the wicked. 
even though I believe God calls us on us to, to love them. You know, sometimes our own brethren become our enemies, and that ought not to be, but that's the case. Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But what did Jesus say? But I say unto you, love your enemies. Love your enemies. You know, sometimes we get, have enemies in the church or in our neighborhood because somebody stepped on our toes, did they? They done us wrong. But if we understand forgiveness according to the teachings of Matthew chapter 18, we have no excuse but to forgive. You know, Peter come and said, how many times shall I forgive? Seven times? You know, he thought there'd be a place where forgiveness was no longer had. If you love somebody, you forgive them endlessly. If they repent, you forgive them endlessly. Maybe they don't repent, but we ought to still love them. We ought to still love them. There's power in love. We, we hear that all the time. There's power in love. He goes on and he says, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good unto them that hate you. Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Another tall order. You know, we oftentimes cling to people that are nice to us, people that believe the way we believe, do the things that we want to do, the way that we would do them, and those that don't, we have a hard time sometimes loving them. But you know, Jesus loved us in spite of being ungodly, unlovable people. But God commendeth his love toward us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Sometimes I think it's hard because we didn't live in that day, and we didn't see Christ walk down uh, Calvary to the cross, that maybe we can't comprehend that. But you know, they didn't comprehend it when they looked at him, when they saw him. He done something for you and I that no one else could have ever done. He gave his life. That you may be the children of your father. You, you, it, in other words, if you're loving folks the way you should, it'll be manifest. Those folks, you, you know, I know folks, and I know you know folks that seem to always love everyone, always kind and gentle to everyone. I'm not talking about me. I should be, and I, I'm a work in progress, as a lot of people would say. You know, there's no song about being a work in progress. We're all a work in progress to some degree, but some people just don't let the things of this life rattle them like other folks do. That we may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. For he maketh his sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye you salute your heaven brethren only, what do ye more <coughs> than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as our Father which is in heaven is perfect. You know, 1 John 4 and 18 tells us that perfect love casteth out fear. That's Jesus Christ. The example we have in this life to live it, to journey through it, and to show our love because of how much Jesus Christ loved us is by our manifestation of his love to others. When we show our love to others, how much we love them. And even those who are not nearly as lovable as some, we need to show our love to them. We, we can't help them, but we can, we can do what's right. We can. You know, we're told to keep the commandments of God. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. They're not hard to keep. They're not beyond our ability to keep. The Bible says when we keep them, we're manifesting how much we love Christ. When we don't keep them, we're not. If we're not keeping God's commandments, who do we love? I believe we love ourselves. You know, that's one of the greatest problems we have is being selfish in this life. We want what we want. We want it when we want it. Doesn't matter what the Lord says sometimes, does it? Doesn't make it easy. You know, it says in the last days, peerless times shall come. Dangerous and difficult times. It talks about children being disobedient to their parents. It talks about folks being unholy and unthankful. The list goes on. It talks about people uh, having, you know, knowing God, having a power, but not, or, or saying they know God, but not denying the power thereof. But the first thing it said in verse 2 was that men shall be lovers of their own selves. Do you know that you cannot love God the way that you ought to God love Him if you love yourself more than you love the Lord? You know, when we have idols in our lives, when we make 
uh, pleasure or worth or anything in this world more precious than Jesus Christ, we love our idol more than we love the Lord. That's a hard thing to swallow, but that's the truth. God didn't say you couldn't enjoy things in this life. He said don't ever let the things of this life become more important to you than the Lord. You know, we ought to strive to manifest our love in the best way we know how. I know it's not always easy to love those that are not as lovable and as easy to love. But friends, we can step out. That's what it meant to show that we're his children. In 1 John chapter 4, in verse 7, we begin. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. If you love people like you should, and I think we all have on occasion, what our effort is is to strive to do that day in and day out. Not to be here and here up on a roller coaster. We've all manifested our love to someone. We know what love really is. But do we love the brethren as we should? Do we love the sisters as we should? I'm sure that if you've been in the church long enough or been around God's people, whether they're in this church or another denomination, someone stepped on your toes. And it's made it hard to love them. But friends, by the grace of God, we can. And that's what makes God's people, or it should make God's people different. Is we know how much Jesus loved us. You know, it says in John 3, 16, we quote that all the time, for God so loved that he gave. He gave. He gave what? His only begotten son. He didn't give us what, he need, uh, what, what we wanted. A lot of times God didn't give us what we wanted. He gave us what we needed. We needed his son to come and die on the cross to save us from our sins, to forgive us of our sins that one day we might live in glory with him forever. That's what the Lord has done for us. And the father gave his son, because of the great love he had for you. You know, sometimes I think we're so caught up in the world and in life, we can't, gra we can't wrap our arms around the greatness of God's love to us. He died for us. You know, it says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. He loved you so much that you are viewed blameless for all the sins and all the wrongs you've ever done. Well, that's a powerful love, is it not? He views you as holy, and most of us are far cry from holy in our daily lives. But we're viewed that way because we're viewed through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're viewed before him in love. Oh, the Lord loved us with an everlasting love, and if he's ever loved you, he's always loved you. For Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. There's a distinction between God's elect and those who are not God's elect. God loves his elect and he's always loved them. He sent his son to die for us. We're told in John chapter 14 verse 2, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. Why did he go? Because he loved you. He loved you with an everlasting love. He went to the cross of Calvary and he secured your eternal salvation. The least that we can do is love him back and manifest that love to others. It goes on, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. God is love. You know that God loves you so much that he'll chasten you? That he'll spank you, you might say, for whom the Lord loveth? He chasteneth and scourgeth every son that he receiveth. You know, chastisement isn't pleasurable, but the one thing it gives you is an assurance that you're one of his children. If you've never been chastened, you know, it, it's something that I would want just because it's a great assurance that we belong to him. You know, I don't know too many children that hadn't been chastened, and many of them, like my own, probably needed chastening more than they got. I think they're all that way. We have a lot of mercy. But our Lord is great and a glorious God. It goes on and it says, In this was manifest the love of God toward us, because the, that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, 
that we might live through him. If we're going to live and go on in this life, it's through him. Hearing is the love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation, propitiation for our sins. The atonement. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also love one another. That's not always the easiest thing to do. And he's not talking about just love your husband and your wife, love your children. He's talking about loving your friends and your neighbors. You know, Matthew 22 in verse 37 talks about two commandments. And those two commandments are grounded and based upon God's love. It says that the first one is, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. With all thy heart. Do you love God with everything? If we love God with everything, I think we'll be manifesting that love to others. And I think we do, but we need to strive to do that day in and day out in our lives. With all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. That's a powerful statement in it. That's the first and greatest commandment. The question is, do we love God with all our heart? Do we love God with all our soul, with all our mind? The second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. You know, we read all the commandments in the Old Testament, all the laws, but they're based upon love. You know, in Peter, it says, I believe it's chapter 4 and verse 8 or 3 and verse 8, it says, for fervent charity covereth a multitude of sin. It doesn't do away with the sin. If you love someone, when they do something wrong, you still love them as much as you did before. That's how Christ loves you. Christ doesn't decrease his love for you when you do something wrong or for us, any of us. His love is everlasting. His love is everything. In Ephesians chapter 2, in verse 4 and 5, it says, But God, who is rich in mercy, our God is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. He loved you, and you wasn't lovable. Romans chapter 5 says that the love of God was shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. You have that love dwelling in you. Or are you manifesting it? You know, isn't it a great blessing in your life? I encourage the folks at the cemetery the other day. I said, pray for these folks and continue to pray for these folks. It's so easy to tell someone you'll pray for them in a little or no time. We drop that and forget to pray for them. The other thing is, is manifest your love to them. You know, we can tell folks we love them all day long, but if we can't show them how much we love them, the love gets to where it doesn't mean much. We can tell anybody we love them. Do you show your love to folks? You know, the one thing I think we all have in common, we know how to show love to our grandchildren, don't we? I mean, they make us angry at times. Mine do, anyway. But we know how to show them we love them. We do for them. We take them places. We go with them. We do whatever we can. But Jesus done that for everyone. Every one of his children. Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation upon the earth. That's what we ought to strive to do. Our time is short. Our life is but a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. What more important do we have in this life than to follow Jesus Christ? to know his love for us, and to manifest his love to others. When we fail to keep God's commandments, there's no doubt in my mind it's because we love ourselves more than we love the Lord. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. It's very easy to do, very easy to justify, and very easy to shun off. But doesn't it make you thankful to see men, women, Lord's people, that will go to the ends of this earth to help someone? And not just once in a while and every opportunity they get. We ought to all be like that. I'm certainly not. And I'm praying, preaching to the, to the choir, to me. I, I'm the number one. But it's still the truth. That's what we ought to do. I think about people I hadn't helped. 
I hadn't manifested that love to. Not because I had anything against them, just because I didn't take time. I'm too busy. I'm too tired. I just really don't want to do that. How many of us do that in life? It's easy to do. But when somebody, you see somebody, or you fall into the circumstances, as Sister Shelley did, or many others, or myself years and years ago, when somebody get, goes out of the way every day, you know, Brother Willie, come by and pick me up time and time again. And we go to a place here in Love it called Love in Action. It was unmarried women with babies. And they tried to help those ladies and those babies because they didn't have any money and they didn't have anywhere to go. That is love in action. That's what Jesus Christ was. He was love in action. That's what we need to be. We need to strive to be love in action. It's so easy to get caught up in ourselves. We want to spend time together. We want to spend time doing this. We want to go on this trip. I, it's endlessly. You know, Paul said over in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, he says, I therefore beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Think about that. Not a dead sacrifice like in the Old Testament, a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Isn't it amazing that if you show sacrificial love to someone else, there's nothing unreasonable about that? Matter of fact, it is our reasonable service to do just that. I think about some other verses down in Romans chapter 12. See if I can... Make my way over there. Notice what it says in verse 9 and 10. It says, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Let your love be sincere. Let it be true. Let it be something that you manifest, that those folks know. They know you love them. They don't just tell you that they love them. And he goes on and says, Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor and preferring one another. Do you prefer your brother or sister above yourself? That's what this is about. That's what sacrificial love is. That's what the love of the Lord Jesus Christ is. He is. Let's notice in John chapter 10, verse 17. Therefore did my Father love me, because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself and have power to take it again. That was the love of Jesus Christ. That's the love that we ought to consider. It says, distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that do weep. How many times do we fail to go to the house of a loved one? When I talked about the man in Olton, I, I'm honest. It had nothing to do with church, who, the, who he went to church with. This was how he lived his life. He always wanted to talk about Jesus Christ. No, he wasn't primitive Baptist, but I'll assure you, he was a child of God, one of the greatest examples I ever knew in my life. He loved the Lord, and he loved the Lord's people, and it was very well known. He didn't have to tell you, I love Jesus. He, well, you, you could see it by his actions. Back over in 1 John chapter 3, it says in verse 14, We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. Do you see your friends and your neighbors when they have trouble, elderly folks? Do we make that sacrifice? If it's our own family, I know we do. How about folks that are not our own family? I know from time to time we do, but we need to be consistent in it. Jesus was consistent in his love to us and still is. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and you know not, you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding him, uh, in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. That doesn't mean necessarily that you've got to be put to death in their place. It could mean that. But it means to sacrifice and lay aside things, the selfish things that we desire so often and go do something for someone else. 
That's laying your life down for your brother. What a world this would be if we all would do that and manifest the love of Jesus Christ. That's what he done for us. He laid down his life for us. No one took it from him. He loved you with an everlasting love. And we ought to love one another that way. But whoso hath this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? Boy, that's a, that's a great question, isn't it? You know, has there ever been anybody in need that we fail to help? I'm just thankful that most of us have always helped someone on occasion. Maybe not as often as we should. That doesn't make it uh, down to the point that the scripture says here. But, you know, how easy is it to not help someone in need? Sometimes we say, well, they'll, they'll, they won't use that wisely. Uh, I've heard all kinds of justification for those things. It says, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. That's the challenge we have, is to keep the commandments of God. To show our love back to Jesus Christ for what Jesus Christ has done to us. He shows us his love every day by sustaining us. By giving us what we stand in need of. You know, we don't always get what we want. But I feel certain every one of us has got what we need and probably then some. I'm so thankful that Jesus Christ loved us with an everlasting love. And it's my desire and my hope to try to love others the way that he loved us. I know that perfect love will not be uh, found in this life of us, but we ought to strive to do it. God's love is perfect, and one day we will be perfect like him. But until we're called home to be with him, I pray that God would give us the grace sufficient to manifest the best of our ability, the love that he has shown to us, to others. When you've done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. When you show your love to folks, it's just like Jesus showing the, his love to folks. When you do it from the heart, when you do it for their good, when they stand in need of something, when they need a cool glass of water, you might say to drink, when they need an encouraging word, you know, a lot of the older folks that maybe we don't go and visit, all they need is someone to have conversation with. You can't believe how many of them just love you to come see them and just talk to them. They get older, they get alone, folks don't talk to them anymore. You know, they may irritate you, they may, they may do all kinds of things, but you know, that's not what it's about. It's about doing what the Lord would have and to show you uh, your love to them as you should. May God bless us to manifest the love that Jesus Christ has manifested us as we go through our journey.